Welcome back to the channel guys. I've got another laptop review here for you. Huge shout out to Lenovo continuing to support the channel and hooking me up with this unit for you. This is the Yoga 6 13A LC6 review. Links in the description for affiliate product links, social media, and merchandise for GDP as well. So getting into this laptop a little bit, we're gonna go over a lot of things from design and gaming and how this thing functions, uh, performance, what it does and does not have. Um, but this is a nice refresh of the 4000 series model Abyss Blue 2-in-1 of Lenovo. Novos. Jumping into some of the main specs that we're dealing with, we do have the new AMD Ryzen 5700U 8-core 16-thread APU with Vega 8 graphics, 16 gigs of dual-channel solid RAM, 1TB NVMe SSD, and Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 connectivity. Jumping into some of the design, like I said, we have that cloth abyss blue top, which this is the first blue top, blue um, abyss cloth top I have tried, and it was really elegant. It was really nice to the feel and to use. Um, I was just a little paranoid about keeping it clean and not getting anything on this thing or having to clean it, uh, but it was very, very unique. It is a thin two-in-one. It comes in at 0.67 at its narrowest point and 0.72 at its thickest point back by the hinges. It has a very rounded edge design, making it comfortable to use as a two-in-one or whatever way you might fold this thing with its 360-degree hinges. Lenovo's done a great job over the past few years refining these hinges and how they work, and they're very sturdy, very good, and I had no problems during my three weeks with this laptop or previous Lenovo two-in-ones I've tested with these hinges. Lenovo has just the right amount of stiffness to these hinges. They do not move. They've got the same wobble a lot of the two-in-ones have, but they stay put wherever, whatever position you want this laptop, it works well. Jumping into the ports and inputs, we've got a USB-C, a USB-A, and a power over here on our right side when in laptop mode. You can use that USB-C as a display or connection. Now on this side, we have another USB-C, which is display connection or to charge uh, the laptop. It's the only way to charge. And then another type A USB. And then we have headphone and mic combination jack. No SD card or ethernet, just to make note of that. We've got our ports for air on the bottom and on the back. And again, a nice sleek design with those two 360 degree hinges as well. Jumping over to our display, this is a 300 nit 13.3 inch gloss finish touch panel with a thin bezel and 72% NTSC color gamut. Now inside this worked really, really well. 300 nits is pretty good. If you go outside, you're going to notice the brightness, but it's better than most of the 250 nit panels that I've tried out there. As far as a glossy finish, I do want to show the difference between a matte Lenovo I have here as well from last year that I reviewed. And I really fell in love with the matte finish. Sitting here with the same setup, moving over to the glossy side as a personal preference, I enjoy the matte touchscreen, but I just want you to see the difference in gloss and matte. It's a beautiful display on this Yoga 6, but I did want to show you what the difference between a gloss and matte finish would be like. But overall, a great display, no problems while I was using it, responsive to touch, and worked really, really well, even in my bright lighting here and with all the reflections. Getting into some more features, we've got the webcam, fingerprint reader, and speakers. Nothing big to speak about here. I didn't really even record anything with the webcam. Very standard 720p webcam with dual array microphones. We've seen this design a lot. Nothing changed in quality, but we do have our privacy shutter, which I really do like on the webcams. Moving over to the fingerprint reader. This one is located on the front right side underneath your arrow button right there. And I never had this thing fail to log me in or to have my passwords work. And we've also got dual 1.5 watt Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. And these are very difficult to record and show you how they sound as well. But these really got loud for me. These were really impressive speakers in a 13 inch two in one. And I was really happy with them. Most people will probably be using headphones anyway, but these worked really, really well. Overall, great features, nothing to write home about, but solid and worked well on this laptop. Now we're going to move over to some keyboard and trackpad. And again, great design here. The trackpad could be a little bigger, but on a laptop this size, I think they hit the mark pretty well here. And the keyboard, typical Lenovo fashion for the keyboards I've been testing with them. Very solid, very sturdy deck, and the keys sound great.
All right, and moving over to the trackpad, this thing was very responsive as well. Like I said, it could be a little bigger and you can only click on the bottom left and right, but overall very responsive. I didn't have any problems with the clicks or the touch and whether I was scrolling through pages, clicking my way around online, whatever the case may be. Not only was the touchpad super responsive and, uh, and easy to work with, but so was the laptop. It was just very, very quick with that 5700U. So overall, a great trackpad and a great keyboard on this two-in-one for the Yoga 6. Now moving over to battery, not a whole lot to say about this. Don't pay too much attention to the six hours 41 as I've had this thing very, very busy, but we do have that 60 watt hour battery and I've charged this thing four or yeah, four times so far uh, with this test here. And whether I was getting into some browsing through uh, the web or through YouTube, if I was watching videos over on Netflix or again, streaming on YouTube, watching different videos, working on things for the channel or just playing some cloud gaming and doing all of that, if it was working really, really well, I got more battery than I thought I would. I kept things maxed out, max screen brightness at 300 nit, all that type of stuff. And I was averaging about 10 hours uh, web browsing, streaming video and cloud gaming. They say up to 18 hours at 150 nit brightness and 1080p streaming. So that sounds about right. On photo and video editing, again, I didn't get too deep, but you can definitely get away with some photo editing and video editing here. And I had a lot of layers open in Adobe Photoshop and I could still move things around really smoothly, no issues, no lag, even with all the different layers and stuff I was working with. Everything ran really, really well. Jumping over just to some very minimal video editing. Uh, I did experiment with this a little bit with multiple clips and that type of thing and some layers and it stayed really, really well, especially for 1080p. If you were going to do heavy projects, large projects, many layers, 4K, uh, the Vega 8 integrated graphics will start to hold you back a little bit. But for the most part, photo and video, video editing will work well here. Now we'll get into some of the really interesting stuff, which is the Cinebench and thermals. Now there's a lot of thermal throttling that happens with this two-in-one and that's very typical for these kinds of designs but I did want to show it for the people that really do care here. Now this is running at first on intelligent cooling so we're going to do a little bit better here but we'll still get pretty warm but for the 5700U we are leaving some performance on the table when it comes to the two-in-one and that's to be expected with this design. Now intelligent cooling is the way to go. Um, no matter what you're doing with this laptop I say set intelligent cooling and and, and leave it at that. We're gonna switch over here to extreme performance and I'm going to show this to you in game as well, uh, why, why I say this, but all these numbers are up for you guys that really wanna dive in and see this stuff. Some of you won't care and some of you will really be interested in the throttling that's happening. So now we're in extreme performance mode. Of course, all this was plugged in, everything maxed out. And the first time I did this, we, bought, we hit 100 uh, degrees Celsius and we froze up. The computer did come back and we were fine. Um, I haven't had that happen again, but it's been hitting 99 in game and stuff and throttling. Extreme performance with this thermal solution just isn't the way to go on a 5700U with the 13 and one, with the two and one 13 inch here. I'd stick with extreme performance. And you'll see all that in these numbers here. You, you can see all of the throttling happening and, and that type of thing. Um, you're just not gonna gain enough performance pushing more wattage through this thing. It's just not gonna work with thermals. Now jumping into Battlefield, now I'm gonna have a, a whole 11 games video tested on this. If you wanna check that out, it'll be up on the channel soon, if not already. And you can see here in extreme, um, in intelligence cooling, we're doing just fine. And you'll typically stay around 72C on your CPU there. And that's absolutely fine for a laptop like this. And it has decent gaming performance for 720p. Uh, definitely. I didn't have too much trouble. That's why I said I got 11 games tested for you. But what we're going to do here is switch to extreme performance. And you're instantly going to see the temperature bump. And it's going to go up quickly and stay in the 90s. And this isn't what you want when you're sitting there gaming. That 72 was fine, but sitting in the 90s the whole time... Not only is it just not necessary for your laptop, but it's it's going to throttle badly to the point that you'll have a rough experience. You can see the clock dip to 400 megahertz there at one point. And if you keep this thing up there at 99 to 100 degrees, it will it will lock up on you. And I'm going to show you that here with this game in just a second as well. I'm surprised the game doesn't crash when we get up to the, the tank area here, but it's a, it's a great little machine to do some casual gaming. I definitely recommend, there we go, back to intelligent cooling. I definitely recommend uh, cloud gaming on a device like this, but you can definitely run games on here very well. 
you're just going to want to stay in intelligent cooling. Now, as we get up here, we're still pretty hot because it's taking time for it to catch up, even though I changed to intelligent cooling. And right here, where the tank comes through and some loading needs to happen, you see everything drop. And I can't believe we didn't freeze up or or crash the game here. But we didn't. We came back. Probably if I was still in extreme performance mode, we might, we might not have made it through that. But being back in intelligent cooling, it seemed to get through. And you'll see here our temperatures are just going to steadily be dropping now. And they will settle back to 72 if you leave it this way. And everything will run much, much better. So thermal throttling, a big, big issue. 5700U is leaving performance on the table when it comes to this 2-in-1. But that's okay. These aren't expected to push these things to the max. And the type of consumer looking for a uh, 2-in-1 like this isn't really going to care about that type of performance. Now jumping over to Doom, here's an example. We're staying in intelligent cooling. Everything else is running at max performance on the power plant and windows and on the battery, but uh, we're running intelligent cooling and everything stays very nice in Doom here. If I were to put this in extreme performance mode again, we would have the same issues we started to show over in Battlefield. So like I said, I recommend pretty much all the time just set this set this to a one two intelligent cooling and you will be good to go. Alright, so as a little bonus here, let's take a look. I was talking about cloud gaming. So you could get on something like Xbox Cloud Gaming, Stadia, GeForce Now, Luna, PS Now, whatever you wanted here. There's a lot of cloud gaming options out there now. And uh, it will really save you on battery. It'll save you on your thermals. And uh, you'll be able to play games at higher graphic fidelity than what the laptop can locally. So if you're not a cloud gamer yet, I recommend taking a look. There's a lot of offers out there now. It's really growing and playing much better. Here's an example just jumping into some Gears 5 on Xbox Cloud Gaming. Super easy. The Wi-Fi in this laptop worked excellent for all cloud that I tested on here. Jumping into some Hellblade with ray tracing. And both of these games are running on the new Series X blades in the cloud. So there's a lot of good stuff you can run from the cloud on this laptop and do a ton of gaming if you want to. All right, guys, that's going to bring us to the end of our review for the Yoga 6 2-in-1 here by Lenovo. And this refresh model with the 5700U ran fantastic. And I hope this video gave you a good idea about how this laptop looks and how it functions. And aside from our thermal throttling conversations, I had no real complaints. The screen was gorgeous. The design is sturdy. The hinges are great. The keyboard and the trackpad were fantastic. And honestly, it was just a great all-around experience with this 2-in-1, something I can really recommend to someone who's in the market for something like this all right guys thanks a lot for coming to check out the video i appreciate it as always subscribe thumbs up ring the bell if you haven't already and leave me your comments below thanks again and i'll see you in the next one